All right, so I don't know when this is going to be out. I assume it will be out on the 27th or whatever, you know, just making sure because my video scheduling is going to be crazy. I'm supposed to still be on break, but I'm not really on break. This is breaking news. Anyway, this is focused on the RE3 news that came out on February 25th. And this video is gonna be late, I apologize, I'm sorry. I'm gonna talk about the cuts real quick and I'm gonna talk about the stuff they mentioned on the PlayStation blog for the updates and the embargoes and the previews that were mentioned in these particular posts. The first thing I wanna focus on is the cut content. First and foremost, they did confirm that yes, we will be losing Operation Mad Jackal in favor of Project Resistance, which is the asymmetrical online mode for Resident Evil where you play online with four survivors and there's one mastermind that you can place traps and try to kill your enemies as soon as possible. Um, I guess the first thing I'm going to say is that yes, it sucks that they are removing content at the same time is kind of expected at this rate. They cut content with RE2 remake and I knew they were going to cut some corners here. So it doesn't surprise me what does add some sort of optimism at least is the fact that they said they will be doing all these new additions and you have to really think in this spectrum in this bubble will these new additions of content make up for the content that was lost in translation that's what i want people to really take away from this will project resistance and more open areas in the resident evil universe make up for the live selection being cut where you could go down multiple pathways and multiple entryways and alleyways and all that stuff and you can end up in certain places will it be warranted if this is cut for more wider areas for more wider space more time spent in raccoon city and i do believe in some instances i would want a longer game over just a couple of quick scenario choices where you still end up on the main path anyway in terms of story and it's not an entirely different scenario as for like operation mad jackal being cut honestly I played that recently and uh, I'm just gonna be real with you guys. It seems like people hold this lasting impression for Operation Mad Jackal. If you like it, cool, I understand this. For me, it wasn't the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's okay, it's okay, it's all right, it's passable. However, once you get like all the points for infinite ammo and all that stuff and you, you're just finished with it, you're done. It's like, I, that's how I feel. I feel like after that initial playthrough to get infinite ammo, you're done. There's no reason to come back and replay this as opposed to an online mode with multiple stages, multiple characters, multiple things to do. You're just doing the same things until you get to the goal, which is at the end of the warehouse and you meet Brian Irons and it's no plot relevance. It's not canon. It's just a little battle game, so to speak, where you rescue survivors and all that stuff. And I, I don't feel the same impact for this as I did for Mercs. Also, I'm doing this live, so once again, I apologize. I'm sort of like, <laughs> my throat is just dry. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not the most impressionable thing in the world to me that they removed this. If anything, if someone just straight up told me, would you want more story content over Operation Mad Jackal? I would probably pick I would probably pick the story content to be honest. It's just it's just kind of funny. Uh, because I, just because I don't see the merit of this doesn't mean you probably don't, but still it's like, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, they talked about the knife and they removed defensive items in favor of the new dodge mechanic and the knife is now not breakable. I think they had to do this to balance the game, right? Because eventually you would run into this snag, this problem where Jill is emergency dodging all over the place. And then you have the defensive items. That means that you can't get attacked from the front unless you're on stairs or something, you'll take a hit. Or if you're like from behind, you'll take a hit from behind. It's not 100% foolproof as it was in, you know, RE3 where you can, these things can happen and you can't constantly guard yourself. 
this time though with the emergency dodge you can do it like anywhere you could do this quick evasive roll if it's perfect and land a quick headshot on an enemy that means that getting attacked from behind an re3 and also having the defensive items would be a bit of an op scale in terms of the player so i can see why they took that away it, it makes perfect sense why they took that away they want to balance the game out more they want people to try more of the emergency dodge get good at it you can do it like three times before jill gets tired apparently and they want the players to experiment with this i think having both would be way too much it means that attacks from the front and behind could be still counter in some degree and that makes the game way too easy next up I wish I had some water for this, but I'm doing this all live, dude. It's, it's all live, 100%. So uh, just bear with me here. And they talked about live selection being cut. They did say that it was something the team really thought about hard. So they had reservations of removing it before they did decide to ultimately give this the ax. And so with that, live selection is cut. It was the choice that you had an RE3 that gave you the option to take alternate pathways. That could have been expanded upon, honestly. But like I said, though, if, if they do take this consistent story and enhance it and they offer some replay value in certain places, then I'm, I'm not really too fussed. It's just the, the name of the game here and replay value. I think that can also have some sort of hook to it and some sort of like sinker as well, because usually a game that does not hook me, that does not give me any interest to replay it over and over again, no matter how much content it has, like Resident Evil 6, I'm not gonna keep constantly going back to those campaigns. I will probably boot up mercenaries mode in there and go back to that and play that and that's it. I have no interest because the campaigns are bloated, for example, despite the game being like 20 plus hours long. If it is something that I wanna go back and replay that is fun constantly over and over again, despite the campaign length, then I'm gonna go back no matter what because I played like RE2 Remake for like almost 100 plus hours. Like I'm really focused, dedicated to that. So I, I think if they have something that's new discoveries constantly, things that keep you on your toes, things that keep you surprised in this new expanded Raccoon City, then I would take it honestly. I just hope that they do have some meat on the bones that they do consider DLC, that they do uh, keep the fan interest in mind when talking about Resident Evil 3 because this game does mean a lot to people and they still want a lot to play and you don't want to end up in a situation where it's like DMC5 where the game is really good, it has a hook, however the content is not enough to warrant constantly replaying the game seven times people want more and i don't want that to happen for resident evil 3. all right so this is the second part of this and one of the things i learned about making these long off the cuff videos is that if you are reading a lot of shit and there's a lot of bullet points here make sure you have a tall glass of water like carlos says to jill in the trailer you know you're a tall drink of water so i'm sure you could put that fire out because uh, my throat will kill me if I don't have this. So thank God I went to get it. Mm. And now, <laughs> instead, of, instead of listening to me fuck around, and now you will hear me read this uh, from point to point. All the links will be in the description about this. And the first point is very obvious. Capcom's photorealistic graphics brings, or should I say visuals, brings Raccoon City to life with stunning detail. Blazing infernos cast zombie shadows down long hallways or alleyways. Fox movie posters adorn corridors. Dirt and abrasions show on Jill as she struggles to survive. The cumulative effect is striking. Um... So this is pretty much standard basic stuff talking about the reach for the moon engine and how it's enhancing the visual prowess in every singular second. They are really taking this to the max from what it seems. And, and from the screenshots here, you can see like the decayed the city and you can see like the neon lights and it, it has more of a vibrance to it, I would say, than RE2 did. 
because you're mostly exploring the city in this game as opposed to just being stuck in one big central location for the rest of the game and that's like the rpd and i totally understand why they are trying to bring out more of the city life before this was a decaying city people and inhabitants were living here so you're gonna have movie posters you're gonna have um you know bright lights you're gonna have bright pharmacies with giant lights saying that hey uh, we're gonna prescribe your medicine here you know what i mean we're gonna get your glasses here old man so i i figured that would be the case and it just adds to the realism right next up is they talk about the re3 remake uh it drastically reinvents the sprawling city streets they said you know it, it, it reinvents them and it makes them on a much grander scale than a one-to-one -one remaster and that is that's interesting it's like they're not just copy and pasting the same game like they did for the first remake this is essentially a full-blown remake going balls deep and they are adding a lot of new things to the game like expecting larger areas and some reimagined sequences that dwarf those in the original game they mentioned in several interviews i think it was silicon era where they said that you know the original game was hampered by a lot of developmental issues they felt like it could have had a little bit more time they felt like they rushed that one a little bit out of the door so this game had like three years under its belt and they're adding more bells and whistles to the experience which is cool i mean I, I like to see more stuff and if they are expanding more areas and if they are like doing some changes for the better that are pretty cool then i totally don't mind these reimagined sequences you don't want everything to necessarily be the same if you're trying to surprise and keep veteran players on their toes you have to change something it still has to be similar to the original in some degree because no brainer it's a remake but it still has to be different in some ways to add new challenge new variety and overall new expectations to the formula next up is the new shops and locations flesh out the collapsing city including an expanded subway station new labyrinth sewer section and a richly detailed donut shop um, so this is basically telling us like, yes, we are definitely giving you guys new areas within the city. We're going to try to make all these stores explorable, which is cool. I, I again, when you think about RE3, you think about Jill covering a lot more ground than Leon or Claire just being regulated to mostly the RPD going outside maybe once or twice and that's it this time around they're really using the environment in the city to really say that this game is huge and you're gonna be you know just running around not like open world material but like maybe a little bit more wider a little bit more white linear in a sense and they have these new areas here now the subway station didn't we see that like in the intro of re2 remake right it's like a little visual cue that we get of the subway when we see that intro and i thought that was going to be in re2 remake it turns out i was wrong it's going to be in this one mm. so next let's talk about the new labyrinth sewer section totally new i think it's in the gameplay where they show the hunter gammas just eat their way out of like the sewer holes and it's really disgusting and they also been like redesigned as well they kind of have these small tiny little chicken arms i guess it's, it's funny it's like you know some of the i forget that enemy on dfc5 like the chicken thing it looks kind of like that body wise but it's all blue is weird so he they have these little chicken arms and they can swallow you whole just like the original if you're super close to them only this time it's a one hit kill as opposed to the original where you got to take some damage before you're swallowed whole so you don't want to be in the close vicinity of the hunter gamma in this new lab of section uh and then they talk about new donut shops and everything which is obviously given that the stores are going to be expanded upon as well and add new areas to the game they talk about the city streets being wider and more open obviously a no-brainer but they do add in the original as a comparison more room to dodge enemies and saying that it's going to be unlike the relatively narrow corridors of the 1999 original so they're definitely giving you more room to breathe with this ots camera style 
and they mentioned that Jill has a new evade move which is R1 and the left stick that lets you dodge lunging zombies and other foes so it, I, I like to do this because I'm such a fucking nerd right I actually because the original remember the original Resident Evil 3 one of the main problems I had with it was that the dodging system felt a bit hard to master and counterintuitive in some degrees like you had to aim uh i have a ps3 or no it's actually yeah i have a controller for a demonstration here so you had to aim with l1 and then you had to also press um you had to press square and then you had to wait until the enemy hits you at its precise moment and then see if you can dodge it it was just really strange dude so i took this controller and I experimented and I said, okay, so the new of eight move is going to be mapped to L is going to be mapped to, uh, I said L1. <laughs> I don't know why I said L1. It's going to be mapped to R1 and the left stick. And then I, I played around with that. I'm like, that feels nice that they, they actually are having a control scheme that kind of makes sense. And if you're going to dodge, it made more sense to put it on the right side as opposed to the left in the original game. So it's going to be left stick R1 and X to do perfect dodges and it, it might take some getting used to and you can only like supposedly dodge three times before there's a small cooldown and it works just fine. It, it feels like, you know, when you just take a controller and you think and you imagine the capabilities and the possibilities of how the controls will work in this game as opposed to the original, it feels a lot more interesting. Uh, when you really think about it. So that's that's something that I did that I had like in the back of my brain And I think that's pretty cool and they also mentioned that is yeah They also say it here. It's much easier to execute than in the original 1999 game and I'm glad they took that into consideration because I, I hated how it functioned last time Like I said, I, it felt very strict it, it is a meta behind it that you can watch videos to find out it's more easier to dodge nemesis I feel than zombies sometimes because sometimes they can be random. They can just walk up on you You can't dodge them can't do anything about it, but uh, you know, you can shove them as well That's that's what I kind of miss too. the whole shoving mechanic where you can just push them off you and, and all that shit since they're taking away like the defensive items I'm wondering is that gonna be like a thing when you have a knife or something and and they did talk about it they said there's a counter attack with the knife and doing the emergency dodge right on time with the perfect one um so they said that careful you don't juke into the arms of a waiting enemy though which means that there is going to be some strategy to this you just can't do it for the sake of doing it you don't have perfect iframes all the time as demonstrated by nemesis punching the ever living bejesus out of Jill Valentine when she successfully dodged the zombie and she was running up the stairs. He just punched the hell out of her and she died. So no iframes all the time. You got to watch your ass at all times. You got to watch your health. Um, I call her a seasoned super cop. The seasoned super cop can now perform a perfect dodge by precisely pressing X while in an enemy's clutches. Success scores you a slow motion counter window to open fire. All right, so it seems like this seems to function as a quick recovery tool to defend while rolling out of the way and attack with the perfect emergency dodge and you get slow mo for it while aiming. So that means you get an extra hit while also um, using this mechanic to focus a shot on the enemy's head. It seems to like snap right to the head or be somewhat similar to it saying, hey, this enemy is like, it kind of zooms in a little bit saying, hey, this enemy is exposed. Here's the time to put a bullet in his head. I assume this will probably work if you have like a good full clip. It probably won't work all of the time when you're like empty on ammo. It probably still slow mos but you can't attack said enemy until you have something, you know, valuable or that something that makes sense to attack them with like an ammo counter or maybe like a knife or something that's about it i assume this will not work to the best of your benefit if you have no ammo so don't do it if you have no ammo uh again it reminds me of games like vanquish 
having the bullet time mechanic which i mean i'm fine with if it's balanced out to some degree where you can't spam it all the time you have to really be aware of your surroundings because you still can get hit by other enemies if you don't pay attention at all next up is the let's see what do we have here on this list i'm sorry i'm like going point for point but that's how this was written so it, it makes total sense they said that jill's knife speaking of the knife doesn't degrade the knife doesn't degrade like blaze of re2 remake and is no longer used as a self-defense item practice that perfect dodge uh what this tells me is that the it's a positive and it's an explanation that i have to put out there for this the positive is that you don't have to constantly search for other knives that degree over time knives breaking like that in re2 was kind of weird <laughs> but you did get like the infinite combat knife eventually after like meeting certain requirements or conditions and it wasn't really that bad post game but I really didn't care too much for the mechanic of degrading knives. I, I felt that was kind of dumb. I, I just, I liked how it was in the original where you had non-degradable weapons with the knife and that seems to be coming back here. The only downside is that it seems that they are taking away the self-defense. And I thought about it and I'm like, is it really a downside? Is it really? And I'm gonna explain because you have the perfect dodge which is also mentioned by the previewer in the same sentence having this this perfect emergency dodge that you can do easier now having this on top of the self-defense which is the i think it was like r1 l1 i forget my re2 controls whatever i i just know that you plunge a knife into a zombie's heart and you get them to fuck up off you considering they don't attack you from behind or on the stairs that's the only time you can't use the defensive weapons if you have that on top of the dodge then it would be broken valentine city she would be broken boy there's no way you're touching jill there's no way you're taking any hit in any playthrough you just have way too much defense so it seems like they tried to balance this out and they tried to put the self-defense option in re2 and this new emergency dodge in re3 and depending on how it works if it's really good i don't mind the exclusion of self-defense weapons honestly that dodge this the dodge just has to be like really on point for me to really put it over for me to really mark out over it you know so they say uh similar to re2 remake and re7 ammo crafting is key to survival in re3 and they talk about the fun facts of uh, re3 introducing the ammo crafting with the reloading tool in the original they said the reloading tool is gone in this one but you can simply just go to the menu and craft the gunpowders and make the ammo you want i assume enhanced ammo has to still be in maybe maybe it's just uh jill gets better with the skill over time as you craft the gunpowders together and you can still make the differing grenade rounds as well i'm assuming that can happen too we saw the grenade launcher in action in the gameplay i think it was only like either flame or explosive rounds we didn't see any freeze action there or acid rounds i'm assuming they are still here they have to be because this was the overall function this was the overall complexity of the gunpowder system in re3 is making all these crazy ridiculous amalgamations of ammo that give you the edge that you need in combat to survive against nemesis next up is outwitting your enemies with environmental traps there's red barrels that topple groups of zombies and you can shoot electrical boxes to stun nearby threats the electrical boxes now i don't get this twisted i think the electrical boxes first appeared in resident evil 5 i'm pretty sure it's 5 5 was the one that had the electricity shit but if it's a, another old one that had like electricity boxes everywhere please let me know in the comments i know explosive barrels um appeared in re3 as well so it's just a symptom of 
trying to use that to your advantage of these well-placed barrels to blow up these enemies or blow up nemesis because there's a lot more going on with the enemies this time around like they admitted in interviews as opposed to the original re2 uh, again I, I know some folks are probably like oh this sounds like too much of an action game that's because the original re3 had a lot more of a faster pace a lot more action elements they're just simply remaking the same thing and putting those elements in mind now that there's more enemies on screen I, I think there will be elements of survival horror but there definitely will be a faster focus on high paced action and gunplay oh so they finally are embodying the meme the master of unlocking i'll be examining this oh jill a known master of unlocking can eventually pick numerous yellow padlocks scattered around the environment and this gives you a reason to canvas areas you've already explored as you hunt for extra supplies that, that kind of reminds me of shiv doors from the last of us really like you go in these areas and you know it's either risky or it rewards you as you go in and you find these like hidden areas here or there i, I assume they're going to be more hidden because unlike shiv doors they can degrade the shiv over time and it will eventually break as opposed to the lockpick where that's like infinite i assume I, I, i'm not sure if they will have it different though where you have to find the lockpick before you get into these areas i assume maybe you have to but it, it's a fucking lockpick i mean jill should have that on her automatically at all times uh next up here let me take a smidgen of water oh god because i've been doing this for like 25 minutes i deserve it i deserve it people uh they talk about nemesis being bigger stronger and more persistent than ever the brutish bioweapon still packs a heavy punch and snares Jill with a tentacle grab and can cut off her escape routes via a leaping oh the flying leap yeah so we we saw that in the trailer and there's a gif here of it too um nemesis can jump in front of Jill and cut off her exit uh, they said when in doubt run from nemesis especially when fighting in confined spaces or around other enemies which is a no-brainer sometimes it's kind of beneficial because nemesis can eliminate the zombies and other enemies in the way so it's like you know you're dealing with one asshole but if he gets rid of a few it's like thanks buddy for helping me out <laughs> it's like thanks dude it's like yeah so i, I assume in these situations it's going to be quite hectic and you can use this stuff to your advantage if you must fight do it on your own terms lure nemesis near electrical boxes or explosive barrels to do damage while saving ammo you know that one seems pretty standard like of course you're going to shoot a red barrel near nemesis if you see it that's a no-brainer that's a visual cue to do more damage to him so I, I don't i don't think i have to elaborate on that one uh but this one is more important sometimes nemesis drops valuable supply cases when you temporarily defeat him nab these for high power ammo and coveted weapon upgrades well, they said nab those for high power ammo so that means nemesis is gonna have like the enhanced ammo on him right yeah that's what i'm thinking like they said high power they didn't say a pacific just routine standard type they say high powered ammo so that means he's gonna have enhanced bullets sometimes when you down them and they're gonna have the weapon upgrades which people thought was cut but is not obviously after reading this which is fantastic that means can i get my sti eagle 6.0 sti get my crits get my crits in oh man I'm, I'm so glad that's back where are my dogs at where are my dogs at this is gonna be 30 minutes my sons 30 minutes so bear with me um i'm gonna try to pick up the pace here similar to the re2 remake there are numerous weapon moss to find i souped up jill's pistol with an extended magazine laser dot sight and silencer silencer quiet shots because when you fire the um what was it the submachine gun in the re2 remake with the silencer you made no noise to mr x i assume it's gonna work the same with nemesis here 
I, I just yeah it has to the hunter gamma lurks within the bowels of raccoon city stay away from his gaping maw to stay alive pack flame grenade rounds to look the devil in the mouth that's kind of alluding to a weakness flame grenade rounds and look the devil in the mouth so when it opens its mouth and you have a grenade launcher round prep for it specifically and, and they sort of confirm that flame rounds are coming back obviously you fire it and then you're probably able to kill this thing easily the skittering bug-like dream demos return and can now inject jill with an unsettling status effect pack an extra green herb it's not poison they don't is it poison they say green not not a mixture it's usually see i'm thinking i'm thinking too resident evil here it's like if you're poisoned it would you it would usually be like a mixed herb or or blue but they say pack a green herb to get rid of it so it's something specifically tied to a green herb to get rid of this huh you know that's interesting like like that's just interesting to me maybe it's bleeding getting rid of bleeding because if they're injecting something into her body and, and and they say in the previews they do it orally by injecting eggs inside jill then it has to be some form of bleeding and you need the green herb to get rid of it or maybe they're just speaking you know metaphorically i don't know i don't know but cool cool so they say that the fanny packs are still in style. These inventory expanding pickups are worth their weight in gold, meaning that the ammo packs or the, the pouches, the inventory pouches will be coming back. Sorry, I said ammo packs, but it's, it's basically like just a little inventory pouch that gives you like two or three slots really. And I think Jill having the holster gives her more slots too which is you see it in the visuals she has it on so i assume that's more uh f feeling a little overwhelmed activate assist mode which is you know game journalist mode <laughs> yo i saw games radar complaining about nemesis saying that oh re3 is good except when nemesis shows up it's time for people to say this is the dark souls of resident evil they're gonna say it dude i i, I fucking know it they're gonna say it but here is it here, here here's the thing here is assist mode the great baby game journalist mode because they suck at every fucking game they play um they say here that assist mode is for regenerating health weaker enemies more ammo and a powerful baby assault rifle just for those game journalists just like it was in the 1999 original easy mode so there you go i i guess if nemesis is dominating your ass you can play on this it just needs like a pink scarf or something to make it more complete to me and they talked about nemesis uh in the boss battle which we see in the gameplay wielding a flamethrower doing all these moves doing this sweeping flame attack and then when he gets damaged when the pack on nemesis's back is destroyed he takes the remnants of the flamethrower and he uses them as a melee weapon which is badass and, and they talk about you know you need precise shots to shoot the cooling vents and it's not enough when the fuel tank explodes to keep the big guy down man i i can't wait for this game i i can't like I, i'm i'm very excited dude I'm, I'm i'm just as excited as the community i've been talking about it a lot on twitter and it's it's i, I think it's going to be an interesting game and I, I just love resident evil man you know if you if you like re and all that stuff you know just come by let's talk about it it, it, it's just too much fun it's a good time to be a resident evil fan anyway this is renegade operative signing off this is my reaction to some of the stuff that was said in the playstation blog as well as the cuts that is going to be in this remake what do you guys think about my thoughts sound off let me know be sure to slap a like on the video be sure to subscribe if you're new you know support the channel and i will see you guys next time again
have fun out there peace out and remember nemesis is right around the corner stars see you later